Hi, my name is Jocelyn Neal, and this video is about part writing for the AP Music Theory exam. Specifically, today I'm going to talk about how we part write a cadential 6-4 chord and its resolution. Before you watch this video, I recommend that you click on the link below it and print out a copy of the Cadential 6-4 worksheet that we will be using. That way you can do the work right along with me as we move through this topic. Part writing for a Cadential 6-4 chord is very formulaic. In order to get it correct, we have to start with our most important doubling rule. When you are working with a Cadential 6-4 chord, double the bass, which is scale degree 5, always. Remember that figured bass tells us the intervals above the bass. I'm going to say that again. It tells us the intervals above the bass. And if we use that as our starting principle, it's going to allow us to write a cadential 6-4 chord with the correct doubling and the correct voice leading. As we look at our first example, you'll notice that it is a very unusual way of notating figured bass here. There is only a 6-4 under the first chord. There are no dashes. There's no 5-3 following it. This is how you might encounter a cadential 6-4 chord if you were reading music designed to be read as figured bass. Now, fortunately, on the AP exam, we usually have more information given to us than that, but this would be how we would part write it if that is the only information we had. We are in the key of E flat major, and we would start by identifying the notes a sixth and a fourth above our bass note because that's what the figured bass tells us. The bass note is B flat, so I would need an E flat and a G. And then remember our rule, we always double the bass, which is scale degree five. So my remaining voice is going to have a B flat as well. Now, as I part write this chord into the next chord, figured bass practice tells us that the fourth above the bass moves down to a third above the bass, the sixth above the bass moves down to a fifth above the bass. And in this case, our remaining two voices will keep their common tones and remain on B flat. My soprano moves from G down to F, my alto moves from E flat down to D, my tenor stays still. Now, as I move into my final triad, my soprano is gonna step down to tonic. My tenor is going to move down from the B flat to a G. And because I am choosing to have a complete triad here, I'm allowing my alto voice, which has the leading tone D, to skip down to a B flat. Let's review that in an outer voice, a leading tone must resolve up, but in an inner voice, that leading tone has the option of moving down to scale degree five, which is what I've chosen to do here. Now, one of the things we're gonna be studying today is the voice leading relationship between the soprano and the bass. So before I leave this example, I'm going to label the scale degrees of my soprano. You'll notice here it's three, two, one. Let's move on to our next chord. Our next chord progression occurs in G major. I'm going to start by writing the notes that are a sixth, a fourth, and an octave above the bass, remembering my doubling rule. I'm going to double the D in the soprano. I'm going to place my sixth above the bass, B in the tenor. I'm going to place my fourth above the bass, G in the alto. My upper voices either remain on the common tone or move down by step. My soprano keeps a common tone scale degree five. My alto moves from G to F sharp. My tenor moves from B to A. And then I'm going to reach that tonic triad in my last chord. My soprano moves down from scale degree five to three. My leading tone in the alto moves down to scale degree five on the D. And my tenor steps down to double the G. My chord progression identifies the function of my chords. So I'm using a capital Roman numeral five, which is dominant function to identify my cadential six, four. And I'm showing the voice leading of the sixth above the bass moving to the fifth and the fourth above the bass moving to the third. Those create the correct Roman numeral analysis for the blanks that occur under each chord. Finally, I'm going to label my soprano by scale degrees to help me collect that information for further study. In this case, it's scale degrees five, five, three. Moving to my next example, I'm in the key of F major. I'm going to start by spelling my chord using my figured bass. I'm going to choose to place my soprano on the note A, my alto on the note F, and my tenor doubling the bass. We always double the bass. The figures 
tell us with their dashes what the voice leading is. Whatever is a fourth above the bass needs to move down to a third above the bass. That's my alto. Whatever is a sixth above the bass must move down to a fifth. That's my soprano. And whatever is an octave above the bass must move down to create the chordal seventh. That's my tenor. Chordal sevenths must resolve down. I move my other voices to appropriate pitches. I label my soprano scale degrees three, two, one, and I fill in my Roman numerals using a dominant function label for my cadential six, four. In my next example is in the key of D major. I'm going to start by spelling my chord. Here I'm choosing to place the scale degree one D in the soprano, that's a fourth above the bass. I'm doubling the bass in the tenor and placing the sixth above the bass, F sharp in the alto. My upper voices all move down, that places the chordal seventh in my tenor and a leading tone in my soprano. Leading tones must resolve up, so I'm gonna slide that leading tone up to D. My chordal seventh in the tenor must go down to F sharp. Now, this is a small dilemma. You'll notice there's a fifth, a perfect fifth between the bass and the alto. That means my alto cannot move up to A, it must move down to D. I finish with an incomplete triad, which is perfectly acceptable. You can always omit the fifth from a root position triad. I label my soprano, 171, and I label my Roman numerals, 5864-753 to tonic. We're now going to begin doing some minor progressions here. I'm in the key of E minor. And I'm gonna spell that chord so that I have E, G, B, and I'm doubling the B. The B is the bass, we always double the bass. I place that B in the soprano. That B moves down to A. My alto E moves down to D sharp. And my tenor G moves down to F sharp. Now, I have a chordal seventh in this chord, B, D sharp, F sharp, A. That chordal seventh must resolve down, so I take my soprano from A down to G. I step my tenor down to an E, doubling the bass, and I allow my leading tone to skip down to scale degree five to complete my triad. I label my soprano, five, four, three, and I label my Roman numerals using functional labels for each chord. The next example is in the key of D minor. I'm gonna voice that chord with an A, a D, and an F, and a second A. I double my bass, I always double my bass. I'm gonna place that doubled bass in the alto. I'm gonna place my soprano on scale degree three, which is a sixth above the bass, and my tenor will pick up the D. Each voice moves down by step. This is the most important part of that voice leading. Follow the dashes in your Roman numeral. Whatever note is the fourth above the bass moves to the third. The sixth above the bass moves to a fifth above it, and the octave steps down to form the chordal seventh. That chordal seventh is the note G, and chordal sevenths must resolve down, so that G is gonna move down to F. My leading tone is in the tenor, I'm choosing to take that up to a D. My soprano moves down to D, and I'm left with a chord that I have chosen to have as an incomplete triad, three Ds and one F, that is a perfectly acceptable doubling. I'm omitting my chordal fifth, which is allowed. Label my soprano, three, two, one, and my Roman numerals. My next example is in the key of C minor. Here I have simply a cadential six, four chord with no indication of a chordal seventh being added. So I'm gonna start by doubling the bass, placing a G in the alto. I place the fourth above the bass in the soprano, that's a C, and the sixth above the bass, that's an E flat in the tenor. The dashes tell me that my C in the soprano moves down to a B natural. My tenor E flat moves down to a D and I keep my common tone alto. I have a leading tone B natural and an outer voice, it must step up. I choose to keep my common tone alto and my tenor moves up to E flat, completing my final triad. I label my Roman numerals with functions and I label my soprano scale degrees 171. This next example is in the key of B minor. Remember, we always double the bass. So I have an F sharp in the alto. I've placed a fourth above the bass in the tenor and a sixth above the bass in the soprano. The dashes tell me that the D moves to C sharp in the soprano. They tell me that my alto F sharp steps down to E 
and they tell me that my tenor B steps down to A sharp. I'm listing the chord tones because I know that chordal seventh must resolve properly. That chordal seventh is the pitch E found in the alto. The E must move down to D. The C sharp in the soprano, I will step down to B. And I'm going to allow the A sharp, which is the leading tone in my tenor, to skip down to an F sharp. In this particular case, I've chosen to do that so that I end up with a complete triad for my final chord, B, D, F sharp. So the key to part writing a cadential 6-4 chord is double the bass and then follow the instructions in the figured bass to take all of those pitches above the bass down in stepwise motion. When you then move into your next chord, pay attention to any outer voice leading tones and make sure any chordal sevenths resolve down. Now take a second and look over the soprano melodies that we used in each of these chord progressions. When part writing a cadential 6-4 chord, your soprano line is going to end up with one of a few formulas. The common soprano lines we find in cadential 6-4 progressions are scale degrees 171, scale degrees 321, you can occasionally use scale degrees 323, three, and you'll find also scale degrees 553, five, or when you have a dominant seventh chord in the middle of that progression, 543. Recognizing these common soprano melodies is going to help you check your work when part writing a cadential 6-4 progression. Thanks for watching.